everybody i hope you guys are doing well so today i thought it would be fun to take a look at some of my favorite jewelry finds over the past few months these are all secondhand finds whether that be from goodwill blue boxes my local thrift store other online secondhand retail sites like shop goodwill um, or even the real real places like that so yeah let's get started so this first piece here is this really beautiful brooch and this came out of a Shop Goodwill lot and I think I paid maybe $30 for this lot. Um, I It was a mystery. I did not know what was in there. I wasn't expecting much so I was very excited when I pulled this out of that box and as you can see it's this little flower. kind of looks like a tulip to me with this ribbon uh, design here at the bottom and it has up at the top here, a very small but very beautiful little ruby. And if we flip it over, um, you can see there is a maker's mark. Kind of hard to make out, but it is marked 750. And then the maker's mark looks like 12 IVA maybe. So I'm not 100% um, sure on the maker. I did try to look it up, but I was unsuccessful. Uh, so I'm not sure who the maker is on this, but. I also acid tested this piece and it is 18 karat yellow gold and just stunning. Very excited to find this piece. Now next, keeping with some of the gold items I found, I found this absolutely stunning yellow gold charm with these beautiful purple stones and I believe these are iolite. Um, I actually found two of these charms. One of them was amethyst that I ended up selling, uh, but I kept this one here and it is marked on the side here, it is marked 10KIL, and it's just really, really beautiful. I mean, look at the sparkle on the, these stones. So pretty. So I, I haven't found something to wear this on yet. You could easily add this to a bracelet or, you know, um, thread a pendant chain through it and wear it that way. So really, really beautiful. And then next I'm going to show you what's in this pouch and there's a, a few items in here and they both came from different places so I will explain. Okay so the next piece I want to show you is this gorgeous 18 karat yellow gold Tiffany & Company olive leaf pendant and I spotted this on Shop Goodwill online and it was just the pendant there was no chain attached and it was unmarked. Uh, but I immediately recognized it. I actually have a ring from this collection, and those of you familiar with my channel know that I worked for Tiffany, so I'm very familiar with this piece. And with the Paloma Picasso pieces, they are often not marked on the pendant themselves and only marked on the chain. So this piece, because it did not have a chain in the listing, um, it was not tagged as Tiffany & Company. Um, but I ended up scoring this beautiful, beautiful pendant for around $100. And I have been on the hunt for a Paloma Picasso chain to add to it, but unfortunately Tiffany does not sell those individually. So I ended up purchasing a chain from eBay. It was an 18 inch Paloma Picasso chain, but when it arrived, unfortunately it was fake. And I could tell by the stampings and the clasp and just the placement of the Tiffany hallmark on the piece that it was not authentic. So luckily I was able to return that and get a full refund. You know, so that was pretty disappointing, but it's okay, I continue to look for other Paloma Picasso chains and I just haven't been able to find one. So what I ended up doing, you can see that it is on a chain now, and this is a Tiffany chain. So you can see it is marked Tiffany & Company on this side and then 750 on that side of the tag. And this chain actually came on this Paloma Picasso Dove Charm. So when I bought this, I found this on the Real Real, and unfortunately, the Real Real doesn't show you close-ups of the hallmarks and all of the angles of the piece. So I was hoping that the chain this came on was a marked Paloma Picasso, but unfortunately, it wasn't. So it is a Picasso charm. The chain is just a classic Tiffany chain, and that's okay. So now I have this really beautiful little Dove Charm that I plan to add to my charm bracelet, and this is a retired piece. So yeah, so a combination of Shop Goodwill and The Real Real is where I found these two items. And then the next piece is something I pulled out of a jewelry bag from my local thrift store. And I don't know um, what this company is, so it's clearly a charm to mark some sort of 
either achievement or anniversary for this company. You can see um, there's a monogram on the front that says DAF and then TASA. And um, the charm is unmarked, but I did test it and it is yellow gold. And I also tested these stones with my diamond tester and that center stone is a diamond and the two side stones are emeralds. So, so beautiful. Um, even if this is a piece where I kind of harvest these stones and um, scrap the gold, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but I was very excited to find this in a fairly inexpensive bag from my local thrift store. I've shared this pendant on my channel before. Um, this I inherited and it is 14 karat gold with these two prong set diamonds and there's two um, settings here that are missing diamonds so I have been wanting to take these to a jeweler to get um, those stones replaced and I happened to find um, this little tie tack in a jewelry bag and this is yellow gold and a genuine diamond and I thought wow maybe I can harvest this diamond to set into that place setting and this was a little diamond stud that I also <laughs> found in a jewelry bag and I was hoping to take these three items to a jeweler and have them harvest these stones and place them back into this pendant and then I would uh, scrap the gold from these pieces so uh, that is my plan with these items but again really happy to find these little diamonds and hopefully be able to repair this gorgeous gorgeous pendant. The next piece is this stunning little locket and this is such a classic design you know lockets have been popular for many many years and there is a personal inscription here let's see if we can make out this date so 2002 so this is not a very old piece but um, if we open up the little locket here it is marked 14k and i have tested it so this is 14 karat white gold and just a really really pretty classic little piece. And then here is a really beautiful 14 karat yellow gold kind of curb link style chain. This also came out of um, a Shop Goodwill jewelry lot. And I actually thought that it was fake at first because I just, you know, it looked too good to be true <laughs> at first glance, but um, I have tested it. And as you can see, let me just kind of arrange the clasp here. So it's marked Italy and then 14 karat, and then even the little clasp here is marked 585, which is uh, the gold uh, content number. So just a really beautiful longer length chain, and it's a nice substantial looking piece. Um, so yeah, I was really excited to find that. And this next piece here, I just love the design of this. Um, so we have these two leaves and this little pearl. So this is a natural freshwater pearl. And I believe this is either jade or jadeite. I'm not 100% sure. So if any of you are stone experts and let me know what you think, um, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, but this piece is gold filled. It is marked on the back here, 12 karat gold filled. And I just really loved the design of it. I just thought it was really, really pretty. And I wanted to keep it in my personal brooch collection. And then the next piece is this really beautiful, very classic looking watch. And this came out of a bag from my local thrift store. Uh, the bags at my local thrift store are very fairly priced. I think it was maybe $29 for this bag and it had a ton of really beautiful vintage pieces, this being one of them. And I first noticed, you know, obviously this very beautiful sparkly face, um, and then when I looked closer, it has this fold over clasp and it is marked. Yeah, and it is marked on the back here, USA 140th 10 karat rolled gold plated. I believe that's what RGP stands for. And even did jewelry experts, please correct me if I'm wrong about that. But so yeah, so it's a rolled gold band and I did test these stones and they are genuine diamonds and it has it does also have a little sapphire there on the side. And yeah, just a really beautiful watch, very classic looking. And I thought this would be a perfect piece to add to my collection for weddings or kind of formal events. Um, just so beautiful. So that was a great find. 
Okay, and next we have probably my favorite find <laughs> so far, and it is this absolutely stunning 14 karat white gold with diamonds and this beautiful blue topaz briolette at the bottom marked on the clasp. And I mean, if you just look at the craftsmanship, when I pulled this out of another shop Goodwill lot, this I found a few months ago back at the end of uh, 2020. And again, this was a very inexpensive lot. It didn't really look super promising in the photos, but I took a chance on it and this came out of there and it is so beautiful. Just the craftsmanship on this piece, on these little stations here. They're kind of these little spheres, these open spheres with pave diamonds, and they're so, so beautiful. And down here on the drop, let's see if I can get it to face front, um, there are two solitaire diamonds and then this absolutely gorgeous um, blue topaz briolette. And this is fine jewelry. And there's a certain feel and look to these fine jewelry pieces. So, you know, it reminds me of something that Tiffany could have produced. It's that high quality and I just love it. Definitely something I'm gonna be hanging on to. I'm not sure when I'm gonna get the opportunity to wear this, but maybe I'll just wear it around the house for fun. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but it's absolutely gorgeous and a really exciting find. And then next, I'm gonna share something that I'm actually wearing right now, and it is the stacking band here. So let me take it off and show you. So this beautiful stacking band I found on The Real Real, and if you guys don't check The Real Real for their jewelry, I highly recommend taking a peek, especially if you're into fine jewelry or designer jewelry. They often have very good deals on pieces, especially when some of their items go on sale. Um, it's definitely worth looking into. You are going to obviously pay up a bit for them. Um, you know, it's not like finding one in the jewelry jar, but nevertheless, they have some really fair pricing. This particular ring is platinum. It's 900 platinum with diamonds. I paid just under $300. I think it was 290, 295, something like that, which this ring could easily, easily retail for $1,500 or so, possibly more. And the reason I loved this ring so much is the rectangle step cut stones. I'm a huge fan of emerald cuts and rectangular cuts, square cut. Um, I really like sort of the geometric shaped diamonds. So we have these alternating rectangular step cut stones with these round brilliant diamonds. And I really just thought it would make a beautiful stacking band with, you know, some of the rings I already had. It's different and it's platinum, so it's going to last forever and I just love it. So this was a really great score from The Real Real for a pretty fair price, in my opinion. And then next I have another ring to share with you. So this really beautiful marcasite and sterling silver ring came out of a Goodwill blue box. Um, so this was a really exciting find. I just love the look of this piece. Like it is definitely a statement and it's so, so sparkly. None of the marcasites are missing or cracked, which you often find with these older pieces. Um, and this one is vintage. There is a marking. Let's see if I can get it. Ah, so right here it is marked S-T-E-R and then T-H-E-D-A, Theta, um, which I did look up and it is a vintage jewelry maker. And as you know, things that are marked sterling versus 925 often indicate an older style piece. So this is vintage and it's just really, really beautiful. I love the sparkle and something I'm excited to add to my collection. All right, and this next piece is a James Avery charm bracelet. And this one I spotted on Shop Goodwill uh, towards the end of last year. And I did pay up a little bit for this piece. I think I paid around $70, which honestly the bracelets alone retail for that price. So I thought that was pretty fair. And we have three charms here. The first being this little longhorn, which James Avery is a Texas-based jewelry brand and is a pretty popular uh, charm style from their collection. And then we have this really cute coffee cup, this little to-go coffee cup charm, which I'm definitely a coffee addict. I thought that was adorable. And this really cool compass charm. I love this because the little dial here actually spins. So it's articulated and you have this sort of bronze tone and the sterling silver and it's a really nice, like weighty, substantial charm. Very, very beautiful. I was excited to find this to add to my charm bracelet collection. 
And then next we have these two pieces that are technically not a set and I did find them in different Goodwill blue boxes, um, but I think they make a really beautiful set nonetheless. So we have sterling silver, marcasite, and amethyst in both of these pieces. So this one here, the bracelet, I think is absolutely gorgeous. We have these marquee cut amethyst stones and they're a really beautiful, rich purple color. And a few weeks later, I found this necklace, which it's not an exact match, but I think it goes together really, really well. So in this necklace, we have round cut prong set amethyst with marcasite as well, but with this kind of vine floral design and how beautiful. I just think the two pieces together, um, though they're not an exact match, they go. And I think they're really, really beautiful. And I'm excited to style these into a look soon. And then next we have a really exciting score. So I'm gonna kind of shift this tray over here. So my local thrift store had a jewelry bag marked at $6.99 and it was full of, it kind of looked like plasticky pieces, but I thought for $6.99, it's worth just looking through it. Even if I don't find anything uh, that I love, like just the experience of looking through these jewelry bags is really fun for me. So I thought that alone was worth the $6.99. Um, but I was really excited to find quite a number of Bakelite pieces in that bag. So the first piece here is this gorgeous cherry red Bakelite beaded necklace. So all of these beads are Bakelite, which I did test with Simichrome. And the clasp here, this is not Bakelite, but it looks like it was kind of enameled to try to match that red color. And it is marked West Germany. And it's just a really classic... 50s, 60s style necklace, just really, really beautiful. And along with that, in that same jewelry bag was this gorgeous Bakelite brooch in that same cherry red color. And I love the large size of this. It's so beautiful. And if you look at the back, you can tell that there was a repair done. It did crack right here along the edge, but from the front, it's really not too noticeable. If you look really hard, you can kind of see that line, but if you had this on a sweater or a jacket, I think nobody would notice. And it's just a really beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, and I think these two make a really lovely set. And then in that same bag was this piece, which I was actually very excited to find. So it's a really interesting style. We have sort of these green Bakelite almost rectangular. I'm not even sure what you would call this shape. Um, and then in between we have these green beads and this kind of plastic link chain. And the reason this got me really excited is a few months ago I had posted an unboxing where I found this very interesting piece and um, a subscriber had commented letting me know that, hey, that's actually a really rare injection dot Bakelite piece by Charles L. Kane who's a very famous Bakelite designer, and these pieces are very, very collectible. So I was really excited to learn that. I had no idea. And the chain style here just reminded me so much of this chain, that kind of plastic link style. So it's possible that this green necklace may also be a Charles L. Kane piece. It's obviously not an injection dot Bakelite piece, so I don't know that it would be quite as valuable or collectible, but honestly, I'm not sure. So if any of you guys watching have any more knowledge about Bakelite and um, what this piece might be. I would love your input. And this one has this kind of vintage hook style clasp uh, where this one here just has that kind of hook. And it's possible that either of the clasps may have been replaced, so I'm really not sure. But either way, it's a really beautiful, really fun Bakelite piece. So in that same $6 bag, were these really cute Bakelite earrings. And these are more of that kind of mustardy, marbled yellow color, and they are a clip-on. So very exciting find for $6.99. <laughs> I loved all the Bakelite I found in that bag. And then one last piece I'm gonna share with you is something I'm also wearing, and it is this one here. And this came out of a Shop Goodwill lot, and it is gold filled with citrine. And it's just so, so beautiful. And and I actually think it looks really beautiful with this watch that I shared with you earlier. Yeah, I love those two together and I don't have anything citrine like this and I really don't have a ton of yellow gold in my collection uh, despite some of the pieces I shared with you today. These are some of my 
only yellow gold pieces that I, you know, wear often, but um, I thought these two made a really beautiful combination. So those are some of my favorite finds from the last few months. Uh, let me know if you guys had a favorite piece out of any of the items I shared with you, or if you have any more information about anything I shared. I love to learn and I love learning from all of you guys, uh, whether that's watching your videos or from your comments. So I always, always appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, subscribe if you are a fellow jewelry lover and you like this kind of content. Um, I would love to have you here on my channel. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time. Bye.